Center, Waste Electrical and Electronic Equipment Center, the first organization of its kind in the Kenyan market creating awareness and the safe disposal of electronic waste. is creating the world's fastest growing waste stream with the current boom in technology. There was a record 53.6 million metric tons of e-waste generated in 2019 with the number expected to hit 74.7 million metric tons by 2030. Sustainability, the planet, and the people are key elements of who we are as we center. The expansion of the technological domain gives us a niche in the market in e-waste that we aim to manage through proper disposal. We center excites me because it's about uh, addressing the environment, sustainable human development, is about taking care of resources and the environment. If we don't take care of the environment, it will be very ruthless to us as humans. We've been doing safe disposal of electronic waste close to 10 years now. Um, we started operating purely in Kenya, but we've been um, expanding to other African countries. Right now we are on an expansion trajectory to ensure that our services are brought closer to uh, the customers, as it were. And uh, as you are aware, we have now set up collection facilities around the country. Due to the growing population and the efforts to ensure global sustainability, there are efforts to protect and conserve the environment. Within this facility, we have machinery that we use to process the uh, ABS plastic. We are also able to do pre-processing. We've realized that most of the electronics have almost similar. So you find there is um, metal components, uh, you'll find there's uh, PCBs, like these ones. You'll find cables, there's plastic. Countries allocate billions in annual budgets to cater to innovation and advancement as people seek more cost-efficient ways of doing things. This is another workshop where we also do more sorting, especially for the bulk equipment that require more time, uh, like the toners. This is where they will be sorted. We have toners that can still be um, reused and, and repurposed, so this is where that happens. Seen over time, the increased consumption of electronic equipment. The challenge is how now to dispose once a computer fails, once a phone fails. The electronic equipment meet the needs, but what happens to faulty hardware? And how are we disposing of what we no longer need. We are not actually aware uh, what to be do, um, done with them and all. So here I came uh, across with uh, the company. Uh, we, a company who deals with the e-waste management and we partnered with them. We donated all our electronic waste accumulated for more than 10, 15 years in school. With e-waste becoming a global problem, we Center provides a solution. So in this particular workshop, after they are sorted, they come here, whereby they will be tested. Before testing, we'll just look at their physical appearance to see the ones that look like they can be reused. And once this process, all the processing has been done, uh, 
we are able to get uh, fractions, components that will be used in the manufacturing of other uh, components. This is a ceramic cutter. This is a glass crusher for crushing glass. Then behind there is a plastic shredder for plastics. And then at the far end, we have the cable stripper. The 21st century is characterized by a boom in the use of technology. We are closer to gadgets than ever before, with an estimated 84% of the population using smartphones daily. When you look at the data that we have, if you're generating 51.3 metric tons of used every year in Kenya, and this one stands at a growth rate of between 3 to 5% annually, we are looking at over 20 billion Kenya shillings in value in three years. I have been to Europe and uh, other Western countries. They, have, they know the dangers of e waste and they have taken very serious regulations, uh, guidelines, and laws. Uh, for Africa, we are still not very keen, and that's why we are dying of serious uh, cases of cancer and internal organs uh, failures. Households are hoarding devices in their storage facilities since there are no sustainable ways to dispose of the waste. When you look at our country, our economy, we are seeing a surging level of the middle class, meaning the purchasing power is, 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 is growing. Uh, the urge to acquire more electronics is, is there. People are very attached to the electronics, especially uh, in Kenya and in Africa. Uh, you feel that there's still a way, uh, probably something will happen and they can come back to life. So that's, that's a mindset challenge that we deal with, but we have to constantly create awareness. We have a museum here, so the museum has certain equipment to show how things evolve in terms of technology. So you have equipment that was used in uh, 1930s, um, these ones were used in 1970s. This was in 1976, so we realized it's also good to showcase uh, the young people and also the world of how technology keeps on evolving. These computers that were returned from the network effectively became like electronic waste from an APSA perspective. And so what it, we needed to do something about it. Uh, how do we dispose them off effectively? And that's where the issues of circular economy came in as part of our sustainability um, agenda. How do we recycle? How do we reuse? How do we repurpose some of this electronic waste? APSA has been focusing on e-waste for the last couple of years in partnership with our partners, We Centre, and this has been mainly to ensure that we dispose of our waste, electronic waste correctly, but also embed that culture within the organization. I think why we chose to work with Waste Center is because we really do look for partners who have the same values and who have the same vision. Uh, come this year, the year 2022, our KCC exam actually was uh, commencing for March and it went up to April of this year. And the computer studies the exam was among the first exams that were done. And the refurbished computers that had been delivered by AXA came in very handy. And we were able to carry out our exam. And we only did the exam within one, one sheet. Sometimes in the past we've been taking our exams in two shifts because the number of computers were not enough for the candidates. But for this year when the KCC exam was being done, we were able to take only one seat. The last two performances have been amazing. In the year 2020, KCC we posted a grade of a uh, main grade of 12, which was excellent. 
uh, the previous year we posted a mean of 11.3, and uh, that is a true reflection of the effects of the donation. I want to appreciate the partners, uh, the Computer for Schools, uh, they partners with uh, APSA for this, and uh, we appreciate them so much. We want to devolve uh, we center to also try and cover the whole country in Kenya. At the same time, while we are doing that, we are also setting up um, in other African countries. So in the next few years, uh, we center will be a continental company. So this is a plastic baler for baling plastic. So it reduces on the amount of space that you require for storage. And if it's to be exported, it will be baled and then packaged for export. As a pioneer recycling organization in this country, for the last 10 years, we have been able to serve quite, quite a number of customers and uh, manage up to around 10,000 tons of electronic waste. We are happy with organizations that are now dealing with e-waste being registered under uh, this producer responsibility organization and I know that uh, uh, we Center is one of them, and they have uh, been, uh, they have played a very key role even in terms of um, uh, coming or contributing to the development of the Sustainable Waste Management Act. We reuse some of the electrical parts, which are key raw materials in the creation of refurbished electrical items, especially computers. So here, uh, what happens is checking uh, if there are certain um, components that need to be changed. And then once everything is guaranteed and, and tested, they'll also install softwares. And then the equipment that is good for reuse can be dispatched back to the market for the second life. The second life batteries are also a big part of how we manage the e-waste. So our process is very easy. We make sure that there is circular uh, economy approach in mind as we do that. As you can see, the cells will be placed in, in these cases. You just put the battery management system to control how the cells will behave inside the pack, and then the cables, and then it's closed. So the advantage of this, as opposed to the, the welding of the batteries together, is that whenever the client uses our batteries, and they find maybe there is malfunction, they bring them back to us. We're able to just pull out any of those cells that are malfunctioning after testing and then replace. So this is a battery pack that can serve the client for a long time and then just bring it back whenever there is any issue. Uh, the glass itself, we are able to convert that to building materials, uh, things that we use locally. When we get to the bat batteries, uh, for example, the lithium ion battery, we are able to do upcycling, we are able to do repurposing because we have partners, local partners with technical expertise. Change is a gradual process that we center is taking one stride at a time. We appreciate the assistance of different stakeholders, partners and the community. We involve the community in, in the work that we do and that's why we have established a lot of Partnerships. Some of our partners uh, that we work very closely with would be Samsung. Uh, they both dispose, but also we work on uh, ways of finding take-back schemes, etc. I want to take this opportunity to thank We Center for their good work of ensuring that our products are disposed of well and to ensure that the environment is not polluted. I can encourage every electronic company especially to ensure that they follow this route. Uh, we have Safaricom, a telecom company, as well as Airtel, uh, working on both collection infrastructure, uh, ways to reach out to clients and customers and, and the general public with awareness creation and sensitization. In all the Safaricom shops in Nairobi, you will be able to find our collection bins, Apart from that, we have recently signed up an MOU with uh, Total Energies and we are looking forward to establish collection centers across the country in all the Total petrol stations to become collection points 
So if you are a motorist and uh, you have accumulated electronic waste in your house, uh, very soon you are going just to bring this electronic waste to any total petrol station and your electronic waste is going to be taken care of. We did have a lot of computers and a lot of uh, CPUs and we have worked with the Wii Center to refurbish those and now setting up over 70 computer labs across the country. These computer labs give the children who are in those institutions an opportunity to be engaged from a digital perspective, discover a new world, and that actually helps them to be more globally competitive in an environment where the whole world really is moving to digital. Creating awareness and literacy surrounding what we do as an organization is essential in reaching the greater majority who are unaware of such an initiative and would love to be part of the change. We have been working with the Oracle Giving. This is the charity wing of Oracle that has been helping us uh, to create awareness on electronic waste and also to train the young people. We have also been working with GIZ and in particular the GIZ Kenya. Uh, we have developed a comprehensive curriculum with National Industrial Training Authority, NETA, uh, the level two curriculum, uh, competency-based curriculum that helps the young people to understand the process of managing uh, electronic waste. Once you competently get into the, the training process, you, you should be someone who is capable of setting up a shop, setting up a business initiative in, and feeding into the value chain for electronic waste management. This is new. It's a new green economy coming to Africa uh, and we are very proud of putting it into action each day. So not only ending pollution, keeping things from landfills and, and the nature, but also finding value in all these electronic uh, gadgets around us. We have investors who have also started coming on board because they have seen that this is um, an area that needs support because it's not just profit but you're also doing well for the environment. And then again, uh, the work that we are doing is also a way to mitigate climate change. I've been happy to, within the networks, getting this positive uh, response and everybody are also very willing to help and connect further on. The continuous support has facilitated the expansion of the organization into Uganda. By extension, we are creating more greener jobs because there is very little uh, carbon emission that is uh, emanating from the U.S. that we collect and, and, and process compared to where now uh, new extraction and processing is done. We plant trees and reuse our plastic bags or shopping bags. But where do the gadgets we dispose of end up? We become part of the problem since the carbon emissions trap heat in the atmosphere and warm up the earth, leading to global warming. Some of the benefits that you also accrue as an organization is that you will be able to get yourself data that can be subjected for scrutiny on how you have contributed towards positive climate change. At Absavan Kenya, why we really um, think ESG is important is because we operate within the environment and the environment in which we operate in caters for the planet, the people and therefore the organization in where we make profit. And therefore all these three aspects are really intertwined and if the environment doesn't thrive, if people don't thrive, we as an organization can also not thrive. We are now seeing organizations and regulators making it a requirement that corporates who want funding, support from external financiers, become also responsible and can be able to showcase the impact they have created on one, positive climate change, environment 
and sustainability. For every 1,000 metric tons of e-waste disposed in the environment, there is a carbon emission of 1,400 metric tons into the atmosphere. We are very much uh, conscious about the environmental sustainability and uh, with that, uh, especially in school, we, we take care of cleanliness. Our children are trained from the very beginning not to litter, to put the trash in specified bins. Uh, you will not find uh, too many bins outside, but the children know where to throw what. Uh, the, the recyclable uh, food material and the non-recyclable material. Uh, if you now go out or in any family setup, any institutional setup, we will now be focusing on waste segregation. Uh, institutions or families will be required to sort out their waste. They will have uh, plastic uh, being uh, separated, organic waste being separated to maybe make composting. They will have now e-waste again being separated and given to a licensed uh, person to handle e-waste. We unknowingly contribute to the emissions since a vast population do not know any better. The National Environment Management Authority is charged with uh, supervising and coordinating all matters related to the environment. That includes even all issues to do with waste management and in this case uh, e-waste. E-waste management is not cheap, it's quite expensive. When we increase the volume that is, proce that is processed, uh, we, that helps in reducing the overhead costs and that helps in making some of these initiatives sustainable, creating opportunities for more people and helping us to protect the environment. We operate in, in, in a sector that has limited legislation and, and policy and laws. Along the way we find ways of engaging with the policy makers, engaging with the public to just try and navigate uh, those challenges. In 2006, we had the first say regulatory system that is uh, following the provisions that were made in the Environmental Management Act of 1999, uh, which were revised in, uh, of course, 2015. But the first regulations uh, to manage waste were done in 2006. Uh, from there, I think we've, we implemented that, but we realized that even with the regulations of 2006, there were gaps. Uh, there were gaps because that regulation did not uh, envisage like the circular economy now. 2022, we developed the National Sustainable Waste Management Act, uh, which was uh, passed uh, by, by Parliament and um, was enacted into law. We still have more that can be done and is still being done to ensure a green ecosystem where we conserve resources and energy. We Center aims to protect the environment so that it can sustain life and we hope that you too can be part of the journey for us to accommodate all the U.S. that will be generated in this country. It's a journey that we can't walk alone. For investors, there are huge opportunities to invest in, in, in this space. My appeal to leaders, especially in Africa, is to make sure they take electronic waste seriously. Uh, because there's a lot of dumping in Africa. Uh, no initiatives to make sure these uh, equipments are properly recycled. In Kenya, we are doing it well, but we still, uh, the our government needs to understand because they are still keeping those equipment in their stores. They need to remove them for us to recycle so that they don't end up to the landfills. This applies to other African countries. 
I think every corporate, every individual needs to think about sustainability and ESG in their everyday life. I think this is an opportunity for corporates to embed this kind of uh, practices, circularity, uh, recycling, refurbishing, upcycling into their processes. We want to call upon all corporates who may be having challenges in accumulated electronic waste to consider partnering with We Center in making sure that that particular problem is dealt with in an environmentally friendly manner. I wish more and more institutions, especially the educational institutions, should partner so that we make this environment very clean and sustainable for our next generation.